consistent failure. I have victory over consistent failure. Amen. I want us to open to the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 31. There are some things there that I want us to, to, to go through. 8, 31. Romans chapter 8 and from verse 31 and I read. It says, What shall we then say to these things? There are many big things that we may be going through in our lives. It says, What can I say to joblessness? What can I say to affliction? What can I say to disease? What can I say to anything and everything that does not look like Christ in my life? It says, What then can I say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And I want us to jump quickly to the different things. Hmm. Hallelujah. Jump quickly to verse 35 and we begin to see the different things that they say, What can we say to these things? What are these things? Verse 35 says, Tribulation. Somebody said tribulation. Distress. Somebody said distress. Persecution. Somebody said persecution. Persecution. Famine. Somebody said famine. Eh. Nakedness. Somebody said nakedness. Somebody said peril. Somebody said a sword. I may not know too much English, but at least I know a little bit of English. Is that not true? If you are speaking about who, you are referring to a person. Is that not true? If you say who, it means it's a person. And the Bible says in 31, it says who can separate us. But also by 35, we begin to speak about things like tribulation, things like trials, things like peril, like nakedness. And then I began to ponder, does that mean that these are personalities? And then the Spirit of the Lord laid it in me and said that these are the personalities and the principalities sponsoring things called difficulties, failure in your life. That there are principalities that sponsor it. But hear me as I hear God. He said in this world you may have tribulation. He said but be of good cheer. Why? He said I the world. So if I have overcome the world, you have also overcome the world. So whenever you see things like tribulation, and you see things like peril, you see things like shame, you see things like wickedness, you see things like nakedness, you see things like homelessness, you see things like joblessness, you see things like affliction, things like diseases. When you see those things, what do you say? They say, can separate us from the law of Christ. Tell somebody I have many sided victories. Tell them again I have many sided victories. Who can separate us? So those principalities and powers, every single one of them that are sponsoring the different calamities you have seen in your life. We are coming to an end in the name of Jesus. I said they are coming to an end in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray that prayer just for two, three minutes. And say, Lord, everything, every power that is fostering this shame, fostering this joblessness, fostering this affliction, fostering this thing that I'm going through in my life, every such power that is fostering tribulation in my life, that is fostering failure in my life, that is fostering a lack of victory in my life. Lord, let those principalities and power bow to the name of Jesus. Begin to pray that prayer. Begin to pray that prayer. Because failure must cease in your life. Failure must end in your life. Failure must end in your life. It must end in your marriage. Failure must end in your life of your children. Failure must end whatever form that failure takes. Whatever face that failure shows. Whatever that displays itself as failure in your life. It may be in your marriage. It may be in your
your business, it may be in your career, but here be this money. Fill your gun to an end. Fill your gun to an end. Fill your gun to an end. I said, fill your gun to an end. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you see what is not right in your life, you have an authority as a believer, as a child of God, to speak to that situation. Hello? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, that the path of the righteous is goes brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Can we take it? Can we can you show me that scripture? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. So when the Bible says that I am the head and not the tail, and you begin to see your life that every time you are at the tail, then there is something that is fundamentally wrong with that situation. When the Bible says that you are a lender to nation, but every time you see yourself borrowing, then there is a problem, there is something fundamentally wrong with that situation. Do you understand me at all? When the Bible says that you are a king, and then you begin to see yourself operating like a servant, then there is something fundamentally wrong. Why? Because the word of God says that his word is infallible. His word is unchangeable. His word is indestructible. Am I communicating to some people? So if God has said that I am above, I have to be above. So when I am under, then there is a problem. Look at what the Bible says. The part of the just or the righteous, he said it as the shining light. He said, he shines more and more unto the perfect day. Another version said, he shines brighter and brighter unto the midday. Do you understand that? He said, so this is the path that I should be. This is the way that my life should be. My life should be better and better. My life should be brighter and brighter. My life should be glorious and glorious. Do you understand me? My life should not go under. So when I see this, I will know that an enemy has gone sick. Matthew chapter 13 and verses 28 to 30. Hmm. Matthew chapter 13 verse 28 to 30. When you see yourself, every time you are writing jam, when God has said, I'm giving you an understanding more than your teachers, has God become a liar? I'm asking a question. Has God become a liar? Why then is my situation as if to say that God is a liar? Hello? Why am I failing all the time? Why don't I receive help? Why is my business never rising? There is something that is wrong. It says I'm a child of God. And what I understand, not even only in scripture, but naturally, is that if a man has a child, everything that the man owes is for the child. Is that not true? So if truly my father is the king of kings and the lord of lords, the one who holds the king, he says, He's the one that has the castle upon a thousand hills. Why am I hungry? Hello? Why am I hungry? The psalmist said that since I was young, now I am old. He said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither the children beg for bread. Then why am I begging for bread? Why are my children going hungry? Why are they going to bed without food in their body? What is going on? Is God a liar? God forbid. The Bible says, let every other man be a liar. He said, let God alone be true. So why then are all of these things happening? There is an explanation in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 28. Can you look up? Hello? Hello? And he said, Jesus speaking, he said unto them, an enemy has done this. He said, an enemy has done this. Hmm. And let me give you the go on, text 29. Let me give you the load down. If you go further up, can I go to the scripture before 28? Amen. Because there is an explanation why you are experiencing all those things. And that explanation is what I'm going to give to you right now. Go to 26, please. 24, 
just read through it and see. Let's start from the beginning. Hallelujah. He said, another parable put it forth, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like an unto a man that sowed what? Good seeds. He sowed good seeds. Hello? He sowed what? Good seeds. That's very important. Not just seed, but good seeds in his field. 25. He said, but when men fled, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. And what happened? That one went his way. He did his work and went his way. He sowed good seeds on the field. But while he was resting, sleeping, the enemy came and did what? He sowed tears. And then when he finished, he went his way. Everyone that is using the cover of darkness, to throw demonic seeds in your field, in the name of Jesus, every such one, let the fire of the Holy Ghost go and join them. Judah, Israel. 
Israel and Jerusalem. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. But verse 20 is where I'm going. He said, and the Lord showed me four carpenters. Hey, for every home that the enemy has risen in your marriage, for every home that the enemy has risen in your business, for every home that the enemy has risen in your health, in your finances, amongst your children, your husband's lives, in your wife's life, for every home that the enemy has risen, they are carpenters, heavenly carpenters that are coming to free those homes. I want you to begin to pray and say, Lord, send me the heavenly carpenters this morning. Enjoy many sided victory. I was enjoying many sided. 